In this episode, we talk about craft beers in Arlington. How's it going everyone? Matt Layton and welcome to episode four of the Arlington Insider. Today we're at the brew shop in Courthouse talking about beer and beer and more beer pretty much. It's, it's just about beer. It's about craft beer in Arlington and in Northern Virginia because there's been a lot of, I don't want to call it resurgence because I don't think it was was ever here and then back, but just don't a, call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> call it, uh, it's just a lot of increase uh, in popularity recently. And I have an expert with me. I have Julie, who is a co owner, is that right, of the brew shop. So, Julie, why don't in 30 seconds you introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about who you are? Sure. Um, I'm Julie Drews, one of the co owners of the brew shop here in Courthouse, um, together with my business partner, Beth. Uh, we started the brew shop. Um, we were CPAs before that. We did consulting, um, accounting, mm -hmm. kind of working the corporate life, mm -hmm. wearing mm -hmm. the suits and ties yeah. and stuff. So stuffy suit. Um, yeah. So we we decided uh, it's been ten months since we opened the shop. So a little more than maybe a year and a half ago, we both quit the day job and started this. That's pretty much the dream is to. <laughs> Quit your own job, or quit your you know your nine to five job. Yeah. I'm sure you, you spend a lot of times on the weekend, and maybe every single moment of your free time learning your craft, yeah. and then you open up a, a shop here in your town. Do you live in Arlington, or are you in the area? I am just on the other side of the just border, Falls Church, um, but that's in Arlington. So okay. we both consider Arlington to be our home in our community. Excellent. So we're we're coming up here on one year um, that the brew shop has been open, and like we said. Uh, there's been a lot of increase in popularity and we're let's talk about the factors that go into that because I think you're always going to have a certain demographic that will just go to 7-Eleven, buy an ice house, buy a steel reserve yeah. and be completely fine with that whether they're a 21 year old grad right out of college or a, a 60 year old, it doesn't matter. I think you're always going to have that demographic who just says, oh, beer is beer, I don't care and I'm just going to get the most simple thing. Yeah. But at the same time, I think people are now realizing that there's more to beer than just Coors Light and Corona Light and maybe they're looking for the next level of quality. Again, I'm not an expert, so Julie, what sort of factors are you seeing um, that has caused an increase in popularity to the craft brew market? Uh, I think, yeah, that want to explore new tastes, new profiles. It's sort of like food. I mean, you could mm -hmm. you could eat the same hamburger every day mm -hmm. and some, for some people that's all they want. They know they like that one mm -hmm. and that's it. And and that's perfectly fine and some people want to try a different burger every day of the week so mm. it's sort of like that it's sort of like food in that sense that there's so much to explore um, there's so much that can be done in making a beer I think a part of it too is that that sort of dream that that it's, it looks very achievable you know you, you quit your day job you yeah. go open a brewery yeah. you know, you've been home brewing for several years and you've, you've made good beer you're like let's do this let's open a brewery and the market is certainly there um, people want to try new things. People want to support local. That's another big thing that's helping drive yeah. the craft beer industry is sort of this this knee-jerk reaction against big beer and against big industry to go yeah. back to like a local place and things that are close to, you know, sort of feels like close to the earth, close to, you know. Definitely, yeah. We're right across the street from Colonial Village, like a thousand units. I mean, your market could literally just be only Colonial Village. <laughs> I know it's not, but I think the running joke right now in Arlington is that every new business coming in is like a 7-Eleven and people are against that and they want uh, better quality and they're kind of you know with the, the little guy so to speak and especially in Arlington um, we're seeing a lot more um, craft brewery, I don't know if you call it craft or micro breweries, um, Saycraft in Clarendon, New District um, in Sherlington. So especially in Arlington, I mean in DC too, in Northeast there's a bunch of new places that just opened up. Um, you know, right by Nats Park, you have uh, Blue Jacket. I think it's it's pretty good beer. Maybe yeah. you've, you've checked Absolutely. it out. But why? So, I mean, there's a lot of good locations. Yep. In Alexandria, you have, what, King Street. There's a nice little strip there. You could have opened in, like, a vibrant neighborhood in D.C. I hate that they call it a vibrant neighborhood. <laughs> it's just a neighbor. Like, what does that even mean? Um, <laughs> but but why Arlington? Because there's a lot of good other pockets of communities in, in this sure. area. Sure. And I think it's, it's hard to open in Arlington because of the, the laws that are in place. So 
to be a brewery, just a brewery, you've got to be in an industrially zoned area. So okay. you see New District is down in an industrial mm -hmm. zoned area. Mm -hmm. but Saycraft is not. Saycraft is right on the strip up in Clarendon, but they're a brew pub. So okay. if you also are serving food and you're a full restaurant, then you can put yourself anywhere that a restaurant could go. Yeah, so, so they're like capital city. It's just a restaurant that happens to brew beers. Yeah, I mean, that, I think, I think I they're know. a brewery first. I think they okay. want to be a brewery first. Right, and when you right. look at their, their beer menu as well, they have their own beers, but they have a great selection of other craft beer, including mm -hmm. a lot of locals, but mm -hmm. also some non-locals. So okay. I think they want to be a beer place first and a restaurant second, okay. but they have to be both to be located where they are located in Arlington. Gotcha. So how was it, speaking of Arlington, how was it working with the county? Because we're not, we're obviously not brewing beer in here, right. um, but we are selling a lot of alcohol behind us, all different types, no liquor. Uh, but I am curious it, uh, how it was as a first time business owner yeah. uh, working with the county and anything that, that you might have liked to go differently or any any sort of things like that. Um, I did a lot of reading. <laughs> a lot of reading, we yeah. While we were opening. A CPA, so <laughs> lots and lots of reading. The information <laughs> is, is pretty much all there. Arlington is pretty transparent, I think, as a county. Um, they're clear about what you need to do. Some of the rules seem to be unreasonable mm -hmm. or unnecessary, or, you mm -hmm. know, but they're pretty clear about here's what needs to be done. So I don't think it was hard to work with them in the sense of I didn't have a lot of surprises. Good. It wasn't like you go in and you've got a whole, you know, your drawings are all done and they come in and go, nope, you need an extra bathroom. Like you knew right. what you needed going in. So right. um, I think streamlining the permitting process could be nice. Um, the there's building and also zoning in the same area in the permitting office, but they don't really talk to each other as much as I would have liked to see. Yeah. That's, that's really the only change I would I would make with them is to, that would pretty much lower the wait time while you're in there in permitting, is to have zoning and building work together just a little bit more to save you from kind of talking to one and then waiting and talking yeah. to the other and waiting. And Sounds back. like communications between the two offices and maybe a, a lot of time spent in the permitting office, but overall it's, it but sounds overall, like pretty good, yeah. a pretty good um, experience working with the county, which is always good to hear. Absolutely, and I expect it to wait. I mean, you expect to wait at the permitting office. You yeah. expect to wait at the DMV. You know, there's right. a lot of people right. that need to get things done and every question requires a conversation there is no sort of check the box type thing when it comes to building, whether it's this retail spot or even just someone, you know, doing an addition on their home or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So I understand there's going to be some waiting involved. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Good. all in all, I think Arlington's pretty transparent. Good to hear. Um, let's talk about the the future of the craft beer market, microbrewery, because maybe five years, well, five years ago, that was like 2011. 2011 seems like it was just last year. I don't know <laughs> about you, but uh, maybe like 15 or 20 years ago, uh, new you know places were just starting to introduce craft beer in this area. I think this spot actually is the old, you know where I'm going with this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the old spot of Dr. Dreamos. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I am obviously uh, too young for those that, that can't see me too well, but <laughs> did you go to, to the bars I here? I did, aside from the knock on my age. There, no, yeah, I did, <laughs> I did go to Dreamos. I did learn a lot about beer at Dreamos. Um, oh, nice. I learned a lot about, you know, um, playing, you know, drinking games outside in the yeah. sand as well, but yeah. yeah. That was actually a, one of the places I learned about craft beer. But yeah, like you say, and that was, God, that had to be 10 years ago at least. Yeah. Um, but even five years ago, there were maybe two craft breweries in this area yeah. that I can think of, Mad Fox and Port City. And right. Port City just turned five, and wow. Mad Fox, I think, just turned six. So even five years ago, there was not a lot here in Northern Virginia as far as craft beer that was being made right here. So, so where are we thinking like 15 years down the line? Because Arlington, I don't know how New District opened, but that I would imagine it's very difficult, A, to get industrial space in Arlington because yep. land is crazy impossible to get. And if you do get it or if you rent out a spot, it's really expensive. Um, and B, um, I don't have a B, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right, there's not a lot of industrially zoned space yeah. in Arlington that's available. Yeah, so, so in 15 years, are do you think new micro brews are gonna open up? Do you think more brew pubs, or uh, where do you see that going? I don't know, I think right now, there's a lot of good breweries that are just outside of Arlington. Okay. You look in Herndon, Reston, Dulles, go a little further to Purcellville, right. Ashburn. There's a ton of good breweries that are in driving distance. Yeah. They're just a little bit further outside of Arlington. And they seem to be able to sustain on not just their sort of local crowd, but Arlington people leaving and going out. 
I mean, making a, a day trip out to Ocelot or, you know, out to Aslan, that's what people do every weekend. Yeah. So it's just a drive away, and I think it's easier to find space, it's cheaper to find space. I think breweries will continue to open just out on the fringes. Um, yeah. I don't know if anyone else will try, like say Craft did, to find a spot in Arlington proper. Um, I've heard some rumors that there is another brewery looking to open in one of the vacant restaurant spaces in Clarendon, which would be great. That would be um, awesome. But they'd have to be a brew pub. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think the, yeah, in Arlington it's tough. I think the dream business plan, and maybe you can steal this one, guys, out there, is to open, uh, a new district kind of did it, it's not really original, is to open up a brew shop, a microbrewery, a brew pub, right along the bike trail out in, uh, out in Fairfax, you know, where that, I don't know, the Whole Foods is, or a little bit out there. There's a lot of rundown buildings, not right there, but I, I think the, I think people highly underestimate the biking crowd when it comes to to, to beer. So. Yeah, Caboose Brewing is right off of the trail in Vienna. They're uh, not too far from yeah. Whole Foods, actually. So, so they, they so bring a huge crowd in of people just coming yeah. off the trail. My, I think uh, New District too is right off yeah. the trail. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just stealing a business plan. It's already been done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go check out Caboose. Cool. So let's shift it now and talk about you all, um, the brew shop. So what's to to start it off? What was your motivation opening up a shop like this? It sounds like on the weekends you were doing um, you were working it with a couple networking groups, a couple home brewing groups. What what kind of got you started on this? Yeah. I mean. I'll give credit where credit's due. My husband and best husband were homebrewers first, and they got us into the hobby. Um, careful what you get your wife into. Yeah. <laughs> They're working their day jobs right now while we're running a beer store. But yeah. it started as homebrewing, and the idea was to open a homebrew shop. And we started looking into, you know, are there a lot in the area? You know, what's the demand? And as we were looking at homebrewing, we started to look also at just general beer consumption statistics, you know, what stores are where. And there weren't a lot of beer stores really in Arlington. There's a lot of great wine shops that mm -hmm. happen to have a great beer selection. Mm -hmm. And we kind of want it to be the other way, where we're a beer store that happens to have a good wine selection. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we've done here is try to build a place that's just dedicated to all things brew. And um, you can see behind us here, this table is all full of different kinds of grain for brewing. So. Yeah. Um, you know, we got all of our brewing equipment wrapped around this corner as well, but um, in addition, you know, tons of beer. Yeah, there are tons of beer. So how do you go about selecting your beer, importing your beer? Because me, myself, I consider myself above average in many aspects of life, but above average in uh, choosing, be like knowing different types of beers. I'm walking around this place. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm lost. I feel like a complete noob. So how do you go about, uh, and I saw a lot of places from, from Dulles, uh, from around here. How do you go about, the, is it like wine where you say these are the front, like these are from California, like what's the process there? Yeah, it's not, wine typically is made, or you can tell something about how it is going to taste by where it's made. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you know, you can have an expectation of what a California cab is going to mm -hmm. taste like don't necessarily have an expectation what a Dulles IPA is going to taste right. like versus, you know, a Florida IPA. Right. Um, and I think that's partly due to grapes can only be grown and certain grapes can be grown in certain areas and some do well in certain places, mm -hmm. some do well in others. So um, with beer, you can get your ingredients really anywhere. So you can get ingredients, almost everyone gets their hops from the Pacific Northwest. So out here, even on the East Coast, same hops as what they're using in California. So I did not know the that. ingredients are a little bit different for beer than wine. I think that might drive a little bit of that mm -hmm. idea that you can make a great stout anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you right. can't grow a great Chardonnay grapes just anywhere. Well, Chardonnay is easier to grow than others. You can't grow a great Pinot Noir grapes just anywhere. Gotcha. Um, so I think that's one of the main differences between beer and wine. But yeah. How do we know what to stock the shop with? Right. I read a lot about beer. Um, we talk a lot about beer. Yeah. The sales reps are in and out. Obviously, they're always trying to sell you something. Um, so I get very good exposure to new stuff, people coming in and sampling out for us, or even just talking about it. Um, okay. But we organize the fridge, I don't know how much we can see in the shot, by style. So we kind of go light to dark. The crisp door has your Kolsch's and Pilsner's mm -hmm. and you know light stuff. And the haze is your Belgians. We move to IPAs and on around to the malty and the roasty beers. Nice. 
So in addition to the beers, there's also a lot of home brewing kits, which I don't think I've ever, may, I mean, maybe if you go to like Costco or maybe if you go to some place, they might have like one home brew kit for like, you know, $30 and it's probably like super cheap. But these, it's like literally grains, like, like you get at a farm. And I think there's been a lot of, again, a resurgence, an increase in popularity in home brewing as well. I, because I'm a marketing guy, part of me wants to say, and I know this might sound crazy, but in movie, like, have you seen that movie Drinking Buddies with, um, yeah. like, Olivia? It was kind of, I mean, nothing happened in the movie. I wanted to like the movie, but nothing really happened. But, you know, there, it's a mainstream media, uh, media mainstream movie that is about making beer. And then um, even in, this is going a little bit off on a, on a cliff here, even in Breaking Bad, there's one scene where what's his face is in the garage making his own beer. I want to say that this it, con, this little 10 second scene contributes to people becoming interested because if 50 million people watch that, they might say, "Hey, why cook the blue stuff when they could make beer?" Yeah. Um, but so, uh, do you sell a lot of these, or what? Yeah, what are you absolutely. seeing here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think our our biggest seller is cold six packs, and that makes sense. We're in a walking neighborhood, right? You know, cold six yeah. packs or grab and go kind of yeah. item. But yeah, the home brewers have definitely found us. Um, we have a big presence as far as you know in the shop. What percentage do we sell of homebrew? It keeps growing on the homebrew side as well. So. We've got all the equipment that you need mm -hmm. and all the ingredients. So we kind of have a mix of people who are already brewing and just are here for ingredients. They've got all the equipment they need and they're just trying to brew the next batch. Mm -hmm. But then also people who are new to it and just discovering it and want to learn how to brew their own. Mm -hmm. And part of that too is the, the kind of like mystique of quit the day job, open a brewery. Yeah. You, know, you got to start typically with some type of home brewing. Yeah, I would imagine your own beer that you make in your bathtub, maybe not literally in your bathtub, but. <laughs> Usually not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something like that your own beer that you make in your own house yeah. you, you, you want to say it tastes better it might taste better like psychologically but it's like yeah. you'll put in the hard work and you you're making your own beer so i think that's pretty yeah, cool and it's the, it is the freshest beer you're going to drink is probably it, the beer that you just made yeah I mean. <laughs> yeah so i mean it's good that the home brewers have found out about you i think you guys do really cool online uh social media marketing i've i've seen your instagram i'll i'll link up the instagram uh below here about different things that you're doing in the store um but in terms of marketing and competition, I think we're seeing uh, other businesses also try to go into this market, whether it's um, Whole Foods up the street, whether it's Total Wine. Part of me thinks that you can create a niche of right here and you know something a mile away, two miles away is not your competition. But then again, part of me thinks that everything is your competition. Every restaurant, every 7-Eleven, every CVS is your competition. So w where do you come in against uh, your, your arch rivals, your arch nemesis? I mean, the beer community is a very uh, collaborative type place. It, it's, it's sort of the opposite of every, every other industry that you see, where yeah. people want to be friends. Brewers are wearing other breweries' t-shirts, you know, they're brewing collaboration brews, they're going to each other's beer festivals. Um, and I, I don't see why that has to end when we get to the retail side of it. Mm -hmm. I think, in some sense, the rising tide helps us all, and the more exposure there is to craft beer, the better it is for me, but also for Dominion and Norms and yeah, you know, some of yeah. the other. Certainly, the small independents are what I like to support, and Definitely. you know what I'm counting on people to support us as well is to say, you know, it's a small independent. They care a lot about beer. You know, we hand select all of the wine, and in some sense, the beer as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you come in, you, you know that people who work here, including myself, care about beer. We know a lot about it, we care a lot about it, we want to talk about it and, you know, kind of help people learn and grow. Yeah, I think in business, some people get caught up on, I need a win and everyone else needs to lose and go out of business. Well, it's not really how it works. I mean, why can't, why can't we all just win? Not in a case where like everyone gets a participation trophy, but <laughs> you know, why can't, you know, we do well, why can't you do well? And also Dominion do well, and also uh, you know Port City do well. Didn't they just win an award? I feel like they won uh, like top micro. Yeah, last year they won um, best small brewery in the country. Best small GDF. brewery in the country is in Alexandria. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, so you said your top seller is six pack. I would think uh, like a cold six pack on a yeah. Friday evening, whatever it may be. So also people buying six packs are those people that are going to 7-Eleven and spending like you know eight dollars, ten dollars at you know for whatever beer which is fine yeah so in terms of cost maybe that's the first hurdle that people need to get over how much 
is, and maybe it's a misconception, but how, how much is a six pack? How, how much are these 12 packs? Are they a lot more expensive than your, your bottom rung or where do they come in? Um, I guess it depends where your bottom rung is and yeah. which oh, it's, six pack it's you're pretty looking bottom. at in here. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the average six pack in here is probably 10 to 12 bucks. Yeah. Probably 11 is our most average six yeah. pack price. Um, but we do have six packs that are you know 18 bucks. So it depends on what beer you're looking yeah. at. Uh, and your lower rung, I don't know, it, there's probably six packs for six bucks. So it's probably... You know, yeah, I, I think your your average is like two dollars, you know, maybe two and a half dollars higher than a gas station six pack. Sure. Um, yeah. But that's uh, that's interesting. So on, on your uh, Instagram, I see a lot of like tastings. I see a lot of yeah. events. What what sorts of things are you doing? Things in the community? Do you have weekly tastings, daily tastings? How are you getting people? We're we're right on Wilson Boulevard. How are you getting people um, through the door through through any events that you do? Yeah, we taste every Friday and Saturday. So Fridays, um, five thirty to seven thirty in the evenings, and we have the breweries come in. So we have reps from the breweries come in and do the tasting for us, which okay. is always cool to see. You know, someone from the brewery, they know so much more than I can possibly yeah. know about their beer and their brewery. And just to come in and kind of, you know, really shoot the shit with people about yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah, That's a win-win for everyone because yeah. they, they want to be there to exactly. sell their stuff. And you want people to come in and like it. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah Friday nights is a great crowd. That's probably our busiest time is, you know, Friday evening hitting the after work crowd. And yeah. people who live here too, once they get home, come down for the tasting. And, um, we do tastings also on Saturday from 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Those we usually do ourselves, but sometimes we do have a brewery come in. Um, sometimes we do wine. You know, Saturdays are a little bit more of a crapshoot as far as the format goes. Got it. So we're going to get into a tasting real quick. But before that, Julie, why don't you tell the people the top three things that someone needs to know about the brew shop? Yeah, um, I guess the first thing is our huge and ever varying selection of beer so we and in all styles and also sort of formats for you going home so we've got cold six packs growler fills a singles wall which you can see here um, any beer in the shop is available for purchase as just one beer so if you see a six pack and you only want one just bring it up to us and we can make it happen for you um, the selection rotates uh, every week every day almost i think we face about 360 different kinds of beer but in any given week, you're probably seeing 400 to 450 different kinds of beer rolling through here. That's crazy. That's so much beer. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so number two. Number two, I would say homebrew and wine. So we yeah. are a beer store, but we're dedicated to sort of all things brew. Yeah. We've got 65 plus bottles of wine on the wall. Um, I've tasted every one of them. So if you have any questions about them, let me know. <laughs> that must be good. You get to just taste a lot of alcohol. Just a nice little write-off on the business it's, expense. It's, sometimes it's a tough job. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the wine rep brings in a dozen bottles, you yeah. gotta try them. <laughs> like, I guess I have to drink these, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so wine and then also the homebrew stuff. We've yeah. got um, all the ingredients and equipment that you need to start your own brewing setup or to just continue on with what you've already got and sort of expand out. Um, we've got all our hops and yeast are in the fridge right behind us as well. Um, and then lots of little things that we can't quite see in the shop, but all sorts of additives and um, extracts as well as all grain. So. Yeah, that's intense. That's, that's, a lot. that's a lot. so you get like beginners that come in and say, "Hey, I just wanted to start my own, just start it up." Yep. And then I'm sure you have people that are just way above everyone else that are coming in and they know their grains, they yeah. know everything. Yeah, absolutely. So you get all all different types of of levels. Cool. And then absolutely. number three. Number three, I would say. The people who are here, the people who work here, the people who come here all care very much about beer and want to learn and share and it's a really collaborative environment that we've tried to set up here um, as a place for people to just learn and grow and love beer. Yeah, I think that's that's awesome. I, I think one thing is sometimes people can be a little, little intimidated because people are like, well, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to be hoppy or I don't know how it's going to taste, but I think the atmosphere here is pretty relaxed where you know, no one really cares too much. No one is too serious about it. I, I think a problem is some people try to shame other people. It's like, oh, you're drinking Corona. Like, why don't you drink a real beer? It's like, well, you know, that is, and I have a friend that drinks Corona and I, I you know, try to push him on to a couple beers and to give him credit, he'll try it and say, yeah, this was really disgusting. I'm gonna go back <laughs> to my Corona and hey, 
good for him. Uh, I'm glad that he tried it and he's confident that he knows that he's not going to do it yet. Corona, I think, is uh, it constantly gets ranked like the worst beer, but um, <laughs> they have the greatest marketing team um, ever. So I think people still buy it. But um, yeah, super laid back. Awesome. Well, there you have it. The top three things that you need to know about the brew shop. Let's finish it up. There are some cold beers just hanging off, off camera here. I'm a little parched and we are going to try this. So Julie, what do we have in front of us? So we thought we'd go local. So this is Saycraft's Hoptastic IPA. Saycraft. So when we say yeah, local, we say one neighborhood over um, for Clarendon. This so is the closest brewery to us. Yeah, you can, closest you can brewery. walk here. <laughs> is, is there any, now this might be a dumb question, is there any technique to uh, trying a beer i know with wine you just kind of do the little thing and spit it yeah, out yeah i mean but you always want to smell it sort of like wine you want mm -hmm. there's not really as much need for swirling because there yeah. isn't wine to open up the beer but yeah i always like to smell first because something like this is such floral bouquet and i mean it's it smells amazing that and this is due to the huge amount of dry hopping that they do on this yeah beer, there's so. a lot going on in there i'll let her describe what the <laughs> smells are i'm just gonna here let's do a little little cheers, cheers. and i'll give it a taste it may or may not be 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> Never too early for a nice little cold one. So what do we think? I, this beer, I've been really happy with it. Um, I was really excited for Saycraft to open and start brewing their mm. own, and I really wanted them to be good because they're very close. Yeah. Um, and I'm really happy to see beers like this where it's a pretty complete IPA. It smells very tropical. It has a good punch of bitter on the back end, though. This is not you know, a, a wimpy IPA by any means. I think yeah. it's 7.2%. Um, but just a nice beer, pretty complete, a little bit of piney in mm -hmm. the background there. I think that's what I'm tasting. Some IPAs, they're just, they're just so, so bitter on the back end. Mm -hmm. Just like you just get that aftertaste where if you try to drink one a little fast, maybe you got somewhere to be, maybe the Uber's outside just waiting on, on Wilson Boulevard and blocking the lanes like they always do. <laughs> um, you drink it fast and it doesn't taste good. This is a little bit lighter. You can see that there's Nice little amber, light, nice yeah. little piney color to it. So we're gonna finish these off camera. Maybe we'll have more, uh, probably not, because I need to drive to my next appointment. <laughs> but um, as always, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, create a productive day. Take care.